Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and for watching our video in the future. If you're in the future watching this video from tonight. Uh, my name is John Malinzak. I am Vice President of Music Education and Technology for Hal Leonard. And uh, we have an all-star group of folks tonight here to talk about Essential Elements Music Class. I'm gonna kick it off for quick introductions so you know who's talking to you and who's in the chat. And so I'm gonna kick it next to our Essential Elements Music Class Manager, Laura Kors. I think you're on mute, but that's Hi, the, the say of 2020. <laughs> Great for see everybody here and welcome. And, uh, and Stephanie, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. And then I want to introduce our customer service person for EEMC, Stephanie Benedict. Hi, I'm Stephanie. If you email or call in, I'm likely one of the people you'll get to talk to. So it's good to see everybody. Awesome. And uh, Shauna Christie, whoever wants to go next, y'all can duke it out. All right, I'll go next. I'm Shauna Longo. I am a music teacher here in New Jersey, and I'm very excited to be part of the Hal Leonard team for EEMC and to bring you this great webinar tonight. Hopefully you'll get to learn some new things we've got cooking and what is coming down the road. Off to you, Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Miller. And I have been part of the Hal Leonard family for a very long time. I mean, I don't use a real dye anymore, but it's all there. And um, uh, it's fun to be a part of this team. Uh, I am actually a teacher also in a middle school here in Oklahoma City. And I registered this year uh, 40 plus years. So I am a very old person. Oh my goodness, amazing. Well, um, so Laura and Stephanie are gonna be in the chat. So at any point, if you have questions, keep, keep that chat active. We like to keep things upbeat and active. This is about general music and you can't talk about music with kids without having fun. So um, anything you have, anything we say tonight, you have questions about, just chat it up right in the chat. Uh, Laura and Stephanie, they'll be there. Um, so y'all can uh, pop off camera for a second. And then now, um, Shauna and Christy, we're going to kind of take it away and go through a lot of different areas. I did want to share that Shauna and Christy, it's so great to have you here. You, you are two of our 15 plus person team who are working on EEMC now and helping to advise and direct this amazing product. And I, I'm glad we have both of you tonight because you're both also being amazingly phenomenal experienced educators, rock star presenters, wonderful human beings. You're also classroom teachers that use this product every day. Uh, it don't get better than that. And also, if for those watching, if you haven't figured it out yet, Sean is from New Jersey and Christy's rocking that Texarkana accent. Now, I grew up in Virginia, used to live in Louisiana, so I can go twang or I can go Southern. So this depends on how this goes. I also live in Boston, so I might lean by the end of this. Am I more leaning towards the way Shauna talks? Am I more Southern like my friend Christy? Who knows? We'll see what happens. I can, I can have all kinds of dialects. <laughs> Um, so, you know, one thing I want to start with, the heart of EEMC, and for those that have seen this, is is songs, right? And, and Christy, you've been involved with, with Hal Leonard and writing songs for us and, and, of course, writing songs and advising on this product for so long. Can you talk a little bit about just the, the songs in EEMC? You know, I think that's the thing that um, Hal Leonard has just rocked on is the fact that they have such great uh song selections we have a bigger catalog than anyone i mean the song selections and choices that you can get from hal leonard are phenomenal they have been that way forever and the other thing that hal leonard has done such a good job of is the recordings they're interesting they're educational they're worthwhile they're just wonderful and those of you that have had hal leonard music in your libraries know that that is exactly what i'm talking about so what EEMC has to offer is all of these great selections that have been recorded well. And to be really honest with you, in my teaching career, what has driven, driven the ship, what makes my kids really fire up are the songs. I can teach lots of different concepts, but if they like the songs, they, they really get into it. So that to me is gonna, gonna be something that you will love about what EEMC has to offer. And uh, yeah, 
gosh, Sean, I don't you agree that are you using a lot of it in your classroom? Oh, I use this every day, most of the day, and the kiddos love it. And what I love, even today, when I I hopped into my account and um I scrolled and I was like, oh, new songs. And that's the most exciting thing is that there's always new songs coming out. It's not like you're subscribing to a product and it just stays stagnant. Um, so I even get a little giddy when a new song pops in and, you know, I'm like, oh, the kids are going to love that, you know, so it's very exciting and they are, they're absolutely phenomenal. And the, the choreography videos featuring students of different cultures and things like that, it really helps round it out. Well, I think what we want to do next, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think what I want to do is talk a little bit. I have a song up here and sorry, I'm switching my face over here. I just, I want to play a little bit of the audio for those that haven't heard the, the songs and recordings we're talking about. I just want to share a few of the different ways that EMC provides songs and audio from notation to lyrics. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and play some examples real quick. So everyone kind of sees what we're talking about and all the, when we say song assets or learning resources, we've provided multiple ways to experience and teach and learn songs for students. So I wanna pull up one of these examples and see if we can uh, take a listen real quick and see, see what happens here. So starting with just a lyric video, a simple way to hear the song and have the lyrics go by. play a few different examples but first of all like timpani instrument backing tracks all those kids voices that was put together in a studio and recorded just for this product you know we're really trying to make sure that we have really really high quality ways of doing this including you know you can also have the music notation player so same backing track but now students can see the notes and have them scroll right along right with the notation right with the right with the beginning there's also, um, you can have the accompaniment track. So if you just want to have that um, backing track only, you have that. And you can, of course, download this. We fully understand that sometimes you might not have internet in the show. So if you need to download this and use it for a performance, that's exactly why that's there. Same thing with demonstration audio with the students, a printable piano accompaniment. But also there's these videos that with students showing the motions, right? You know, I could just literally play these videos for an hour. They know it's it's so exciting to see because these kids are really phenomenal. And it's really important that kids see themselves and hear themselves in the instruction, right? And I'm sure Sean and Christy, you've experienced this many times. Yeah, they definitely would much prefer to see kids their own age or just kids in general, even if they're not their own age, like with my littles, there's not going to be as many littles, but, you know, they like to see kids rather than always see the adults. Um, and it's nice for them to say, come on, we're going to watch and do it with them. And then I'm less worried about, you know, instructing with them and we're doing it together, which kind of changes that dynamic of the classroom when the teacher's like alongside the students doing it with the video of another ch student, a child doing it. And another one I want to share, another thing about these arrangements is, you know, there's a lot of songs that are out there. And of course, with pop songs and, and songs from musicals, I mean, these are things that Hal Leonard, you know, really does well. We really try to figure out how do we make these accessible to younger students? And I know, Christy, this is one of your favorites as well. Like this, this My Shot from Hamilton, just thinking about how do we make this work for, for younger students? I'll play it from the lyric video, but you'll hear the the arrangement of the backing track and a nice slow tempo.
Like just phenomenal. I don't know if you're listening to it in stereo like I am, but you hear the different singers coming in, like rapper one and right, rapper two coming in the left, the panning. It's so fun. It really is. You know, I'm going to say something about, um, we have all these great songs. You know, I went through today just looking at the things that I knew that I've already recognized. You've got Broadway songs, My Shot. You've got Castle on the Cloud. You've got uh, You Can't Stop the Beat. You've got... Uh, just an amazing selection from just Broadway. Then you've got musical songs. So you've got A Million Dreams from The Greatest Showman. And I mean, when you hear songs like that, when kids hear that those are available, like, can we sing that song? Can we sing that song? You, I, can, I can go on. We've got Jazz Standards, uh, Tuxedo Junction, Route 66. We've got uh, Old Standards, Jackie the Yak, uh, Disney, all kinds of Disney, because we've got the rights to that, Under the Sea, Part of Your World. There's just some new Disney ones that were added there. But the point is, there is some great teaching concepts that you can find in those songs. So you do my shot, you're going to talk about triplets. You're going to talk about the difference between singing voice and speaking voice, if that's what you want to do. Uh, if just if all you wanted is movement, better when I'm dancing. If you wanted to do, uh, you know, melodic direction, then have them do yesterday or something that where they can follow it. There's just so many wonderful, great selections and you know my shot is much longer in the real in the, in the real world but the Helena writers are so good about crafting them for the age appropriate that you need so that particular arrangement is shorter it's slower and the harmony is there so it's not a hard, a hard harmony to learn for even the youngest learners the kids hear it automatically so you know those are all great teaching tools and at the same time you've grabbed their attention because they know it they've seen it they understand it so. that's amazing christy thank you thank you so much for for talking about that because it's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here i want to show so we've talked about all these different uh song assets the different type of videos and look i'll be honest in a perfect world we would love to have every song have every possible way every possible video, every possible thing. And we're, we're working towards that, right? So you will notice that certain songs have different materials. They may have, they, they may just have a lyric video. They may have choreography video. So, you know, we're working through a balance of adding new songs, especially the hits as they come out, as well as going back and adding new ways to learn existing songs. So all of that is in progress and you'll see, you know, constant improvement on that. And you have seen, and you have seen that going forward. I wanted to make sure everyone knows how to search and filter and find uh, songs by what pieces they have. So I want to show that off real quick. And then I want to hear how Christy and Shauna use this uh, in those classrooms. So let me go ahead and spotlight myself again and share this. So when you go to songs and you'll see everything you need is in the he right here, header at the top. So when you go to songs, there's filters right here. You can, of course, search by name and you'll see all the songs are up to 515 total. And you can go and add filters and you can filter by these various concepts. And uh, you can also do by song asset. And so I want to show this one off. So you can say, I need something that has a video. Here's everything that has video. Or you can say, I want something that has a teaching plan. A lot of songs have an individual teaching plan, which allows you to have a, a song based lesson and a way to teach that song. And you can you can combine these as needed. So let's say I want something that shows lyrics, but I also want something that covers a certain holiday. So let's go. I'm just going to pick Christmas here. I know that's a little out of season. Maybe we're looking forward to Christmas in July. And notice this is songs with lyrics and fits this. Little known fact, if you click the and, it turns it into an or. So you have this combination of and or searches. So for example, if I said, I want something with lyrics or notation, watch this, show me everything that has a lyric video or a notation. So make sure you know to use that and or option. I'm just gonna drive everyone, make everyone dizzy by clicking it real fast. Cause that's a really great way to go in and search and find the songs you need. And once you do, you can add them to playlists. 
So I really want to dig into playlists. And before we do, I know that Shauna and Christy, you both use playlists a lot in your teaching. Can you share some some ways you currently use playlists? And I'll go ahead and pull up a, a demo while you're while you're talking. Yeah, there's three main ways I really use playlists. Um, the first is to organize my concert songs. So I've got like a spring 2021 kindergarten concert, and it might just be them. But when I'm searching for songs. To start with, I'll just have like a spring 2021 concert playlist and I'll just start dumping things as I find them. And then I can go in and start narrowing it down and figuring out what's gonna work for which classes. Um, so it's kind of like a brain dump that I can then sort and organize and get rid of and kind of peruse. So that's one way I use it. Another way I use it is for like holidays. We've got Earth Day coming up. I made an Earth Day playlist and went and searched for songs that I thought I could utilize. Um, you know, within my lessons for Earth Day, or I have a playlist for, you know, Valentine's Day, for St. Patrick's Day. So the different holidays or themes, Martin Luther King Day, that you might have going on in school, maybe you have a, a special character education, SEL thing coming up that you can pull specific songs and put it in. The last way I use it is um, how I like organize my entire year is by, um, and so this kind of leads us into a future part of this webinar discussion, but is by like the overarching concepts that I teach by unit. And so I can throw songs in in order within like a unit playlist. And then I know when I'm teaching rhythm and beat, here's all the songs I love to use. Um, and then we're going to talk about how you can now my new favorite feature is to make them a lesson run a playlist as a lesson. Um, but it makes it super duper simple and you can switch the order around of the songs once you put them in a playlist you're not married to like the order you put them in you can move them around you can put in specific assets sometimes i'll you know when i make a playlist when i'm sorting for my concert that's for me and that's got like the whole song and everything available to it but then i'll take that and pare it down and i'll make a playlist just for the kids that only has the lyric videos or choreography videos that I want them to watch. So when they click for that song, they only get the one asset. So you have a lot of flexibility in like how you're gonna use it and for what audience to really make those playlists work for you and your kiddos. What do you think, Christy? How else do you use yeah. it? You know, I'm in such a different situation right now than you are. And I mean, I can see if I were still teaching elementary, that would be so beneficial. I teach fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. But right now, my fifth graders are getting ready for a concert. We're going to do it, a concert on the pond because guess what? We could do that outside. And that means we don't have to wear masks. So yay for that. And uh, anyway, so I have the song selections that I wanted to do with them. Uh, we're going to theme it around the pandemic. And I sort of picked some songs that I could do that would follow through with that. And we're going to put a little narration with it. So I have them in the order that I know that we're going to be singing them. But what's great about that is that my kids would say, they said, is there any way that you can put that on the portal so that we can practice it at home? I'm like, as a matter of fact, I can do that. So I copy the link and I put it on the portal and then they can access it anywhere at any time. And I mean, they come back knowing that stuff. They know the music really well because they've been practicing it at home. It's not something that I made them do. It's something they want to do. And so that's that's a beauty of it too, is that that can change. Hey, when the pandemic was happening last year and I had access to it, it was like, okay, guys, we got to keep singing. Here's a whole list of songs that you can do. Hey, he, these are all going to be themed around such and such. And they would be able to, you know, practice them and sing with them there. It was, it was a lifesaver because they needed to keep singing and they, they had that chance to do it with uh, the EEMC playlist. So I, that's I where this, that's right. Yeah, I had the same thing. And I also did that. My kids loved at Halloween specifically. They really loved a lot of the songs and they were like, can you share this in our Google, my kindergartners are like, can you share this in our Google classroom so I can sing with my, my sister at home? And so I did, I made a playlist, put it in their Google classroom. And then they came back where the parents are sending me videos of them and their like little siblings singing the Halloween songs from EEMC. It's like great to pull in that family aspect too, that I, I didn't intend, I'm gonna not gonna lie, but to pull that in was really awesome. 
It is. This, this is so much fun. I'm loving watching the chat and everyone share their uh, ideas and what they're seeing. This is so fun. Um, for those of you that might not be using Playlist yet, I want to show just briefly, you know, what this feature. So you go up here to Playlists and you have a list and you have as a teacher, like unlimited playlist in this product, right? I can even put myself in here so you don't miss me. Uh, so you have unlimited playlists here, right? And so I'll just open one. Uh, one thing Shauna mentioned, again, there's so many great things here. You can just click and drag these so you can reorder them as you need to. So don't forget that you can just click and drag, right? Now, a playlist is how do you create a playlist? Maybe you've never done one. So as you look at a song, you'll notice this universal sort of icon here. You'll see the folder with a plus. That is add to playlist. And you will absolutely see this all over. So you see the folder plus on the song, you see it on all the individual asset components, and you'll see this all over EEMC. And what this little plus folder means is you add a playlist. So if you want to make a new playlist, you can just create one right in this dialog, or of course you can select an existing one. So I'm going to use my EMC is Austin million exclamation point. So I just added the entire my shot song, including all the options to this playlist. Well, let's go forward and say, you know what? I want to find this. Oh, I love this better when I'm dancing video. So let me add just this lyric video to my playlist. So I'm going to add this as well. This is fun. I'm just going to keep on adding things. So I'll go back to here's all my playlists. Let me go back to all my playlists and show you. So now my EEMC is awesome playlist has three items and they're all different, right? So now there's several things I can do. Notice that the playlist is shared. When you share a playlist, you are generating a super special link for your students to be able to access anything in the playlist. Now, when you generate the share link, I can copy the share link for the entire playlist, but notice every individual thing in your playlist also gets a link. So I saw a couple people that have already popped on that said it's a lifesaver with Canvas and Google. Absolutely, because all you have to do is grab this share link and copy it, and you pop that link in Canvas, Seesaw, Google Classroom, wherever, and your students can click it and see this thing. So again, you can share the entire playlist or just one individual piece of a playlist, and you could create all sorts of combinations of share links. And Shauna already uh, spilled the beans on our new feature, which is right here called Lesson View. So let's say you're putting together a playlist in a sequential order and you wanna use it as a lesson. Brand new, as of just a week or two ago, you can now launch a playlist as a lesson view and you can go sequentially step by step. So notice I had added the whole My Shot song, so it shows up as the whole song. But in this case, I only added this video. So you can launch this right as a playlist. You can go as a lesson. You can go full screen however you want. So you now can take any playlist and launch it as a lesson and all of your playlists are there and organized. That is super, super exciting. Another thing I'll add, John, is you don't even have to just think LMS. If people use a website, they could, and that's how they communicate with their students, they could, they could post it on there as well. And you'll see, you know, one thing about playlists that's really important to us is, is flexible, right? This idea of, of tools being flexible for your needs. And we'll talk about this here in a minute and we start talking about the, the new lessons and all the work we've been doing there. But we, uh, as an EMC team, really are focused on serving you as the music educator. And that means that you know your students best, you know your school best, you know your community best. And we wanna make sure that everything we provide at EMC is flexible and adaptable and customizable for your need. And so playlists are this completely like flexible tool that can be used as an organization ground to just put ideas. You can put on programs, you can make lessons out of them. And if you even want to, if you have a bunch of playlists, you can even combine playlists into class collections, which are collections of playlists. So again, just so many flexible tools and options to help you decide how you want to use all of the content in EMC. Where do we want to go next? Do you want to talk, um, maybe we should talk about some of the uh, resources. 
So I want to share, I can just keep going with a little screen share here if that works for everyone. I will go ahead and make this big for all the attendees. So now lots of resources in here. I want to talk about these two methods first. So we have a full recorder method and full ukulele method right in EEMC. And if you're not using this step-by-step, -step, and by the way, you see this folder plus icon, I see it's everywhere. Any of these individual steps, you could, yes, add to a playlist. So you could have this whole recorder unit. You could also customize it. So if you'd like to disable certain pieces of the recorder unit, you can customize it and create your own versions. Same thing with, with ukulele, there's so many options. Maybe you just wanna demonstrate the parts of the ukulele as a, as a step. You can just share this to your own playlist and share just this one component for your students whenever you need. So again, you can use all of these materials end to end, but you could also use them piece by piece, however you need for your students. Sean or Chrissy, I, sh I should probably know this. Are you using either of these methods with your students right now? So I'm not currently, because I teach pre-K to one, using either of those with mine. Um, but I, during the shutdown, I had a first grader who, uh, who's in kindergarten actually showed up to music class and was like, I got a recorder. Can you teach me Mrs. Longo? And so I made a playlist for him in EEMC with the recorder method. And I was like, I want you to, and I gave him an assignment. I told him what to learn by the next time. And he came back and he played that song for me. And it was great. Um, so it's a great way to kind of like push for me to be able to push advanced kids um, and give them some different things to work on. Yeah, I don't teach either one of those two things in my class. They do that in the lower school. So I know that uh, our teacher down there has been using them. And I don't know what exactly what method it is that he is involved with. But, um, you know, I do have a granddaughter and she just came to me and said, Mimi, we're learning how to play the ukulele in my class. And I said, oh, really? That your teacher should be looking at so I mean I don't know I'm going to share at least and see if she's interested or if she's got access to the EEMC but it's nice to know that that's there I mean and those are just two of the results are you going to show any more of those others John the other the uh, digital books books that you have in there I you know what I might have that queued up right now so so and, yeah let's talk about digital books right because this is another um, this is something how learners wanted, you know, wanted for a while. And we launched these uh, probably a little over a year ago um, as a digital format for, you know, and how learner has hundreds of digital books, but we have a proprietary digital book format that combines text and uh, audio and video all into one um, you know, platform that can be used on any device. And we are adding these as part of the subscription and EEMC. So I think we started with six or eight, we were up to 15 digital books now in EEMC. And I'll show you what these are. They're this virtual library. So not only do you have those recorder ukulele methods, but let's say you wanna do ocarina. Let's say you wanna do guitar or piano. You have entire digital books here. We have rhythm cups, we have world drumming, we have boom whackers, we have new digital books coming out, the new ones that we're getting ready to add, world grooves coming out. Shauna, I know you want your body beats. This was coming out soon. And of course, whacked on classics, more boom whacker. And all of these are gonna be available as part of the subscription. So I'll open one up. If you haven't seen these, this is the digital book format. And it actually remembers the last place I left off, which is really cool as well. You can, of course, uh, you have some side nav here that you can scroll with. Um, oh, this is not the one I wanted. I wanted to do, where's the rhythm cups? You know, I love this one. People laugh, these kids are just absolutely adorable. So this rhythm cups lets you scroll through, you have embedded video, specific instructions on songs. And again, you have kids demonstrating. The cups are on the table or floor or whatever your tapping surface may be. Pick them up with your hands. And I'm sorry, I could watch this all day. These kids are awesome. But again, these students demonstrate the, the rhythm cup exercise. Here's the pattern. You can see the notation. And then you have the full like demonstration audio and accompaniment audio all embedded in line, right? And again, you have 15 of these books and three more on the way. And every time we have a new digital book at How Learn that we think is gonna be fantastic for K-5, 
we're adding it in. So you just keep getting more and more and more. Um, Shauna, Christy, anyone's, oh, the kids songs, the super easy kids songs is new too. This one came out, I think just a couple weeks ago, right? So you have all of these additional songs in here in digital book format as well. Yeah, the rhythm one is really good. That's to the left of that, the, the rhythm read and play. Oh yeah. Awesome book. So you could again, approve all of these. And again, with, with the digital books, because they're in a format, you can, again, you can share them to a playlist. So like everything else, if you have a student that's like, I want to learn, I'm, I got an ocarina, what do I do with it? Make a playlist, pop that digital book in, share it with that kid, and guess what? They now have access, right? This is a beautiful thing. This is not just for a teacher. This is for all of your students, and your license allows you to share materials with your students. And we, you know, we really, you know, understand how difficult it can be to have a first grader remember their username and password to anything. So we have this sharing process that's just generate a link, send it to the kid let them click it and they can have it, right? And that was something that was really exciting for us to bring to the table as well. You know, I have to tell you that when I saw those did those vir that virtual library when it first came out and those two Will Schmidt books were in there because I spent so much money buying those myself to, to know that they were in that. And you know, the beauty of EEMC is that everything's at your fingertips. You don't have to go looking through all of your resources to try to find out where is that book and where did I put it? You can you can tag all of that. You can find it pretty easily. But it's just invaluable what that offers. Just that virtual library. Just that virtual library. So, that is a good point. I think I think we added it up. It's like six hundred dollars or more. And just if you bought all these books by themselves, and we're just they're just part of the subscription, right? You know, we we're trying to provide as many options as possible to serve to serve teachers. Um, well, look, I think it's time to talk about lessons, right? And I'll just do a little kind of a setup here on where we are with lessons. You know, we at How Leonard, we this product started almost two years ago. It's coming up on two years. And again, we wanted to do something really powerful and special in the digital environment. And this was pre-pandemic before we ever knew that people were going to be online only, right? I mean, it was and, you know, our original concept was like, we're going to make an all-encompassing curriculum. And one thing we found as we put out lessons and as we've started to introduce them that and, and get lots of feedback from teachers is that, and I'll, I'll just make this do, we've talked to so many music educators. If you ask 10 elementary school teachers exactly what a curriculum needs to be, you'll get 17 answers and they're all absolutely correct and have to be that way. And it is one of the most beautiful things about teaching music. And as we got all this feedback, we said, wow, the curriculum and, and lessons are so personalized to the classroom. So we have stepped back and we've been working like months and months on this alignment. And so we want to do, we've decided and we're you know introducing tonight and you'll see these come out. We're really rolling now. We decided we need to do three things with lessons. One, we need to align them to universal musical concepts in a transparent way that allows you as a music educator to plug these into your curriculum or use them as a curriculum how you need to do it, right? Um, two, we, in, in, in doing that, we need to make sure the songs that are in the lessons align to those concepts. We need to create this really powerful alignment. Second, we need to align to national standards, right? And third, we want to include, we need to include social emotional learning in every lesson. So we've come up with a new lesson format that is consistent for every lesson that includes national standard alignment, social emotional learning, and musical uh, skills and concepts all aligned in a transparent way so you can see exactly what's coming out and how they're formatted and you can use it exactly as we've designed to the flow but we fully expect and anticipate and want you to pick choose and use them in any order that makes sense to you as an educator and i know shauna and christy we've been so involved i mean look like we're like texted and calling like three times a day like and like 
And I want to like, I'm so excited about this because to have like deep musical instructions on like the, the musical conversations on like steady beat, what is weak and strong beat? Is it weak and strong beat? What does this mean? Or what are we trying to do? Like, y'all, we've gone really deep in some like conversations. My favorite is I wake up and like, we'll talk. And then I get this beautiful email from Christy. That's like, I thought about this this morning on the way to work. And it's so cool. Like so much thoughts gone into this, y'all. Um, it's been so much fun. Um, I just want to share, I'll share a little bit. And I'll let y'all jump in. So what we've done, and you'll see this right on the site. If you go to lessons on EE music class right now, I'll spotlight this screen so you can see it real big. Um, if you go to EMC, you'll see, you'll see all the current lessons listed. Um, and we're adding new lessons in a new format. And we'll talk about the transition. These, these will stay up uh, for a while. But you'll notice that we have this lesson development and concepts document that we've added. And we're putting this up to be really transparent. So if you read through this, We've, we've identified the key uh, components that we want to be flexible to support your curriculum. We want to correlate with NCS and SEL. And we talked a little bit about the consistent format you'll see. A full overview, welcome activities, learning goals, vocabs, connection in every step, um, social emotional learning. So I'll show a, a sneak peek of a lesson but I really want to highlight this lesson concept. So we came up with six concept units and then all of the various concepts in each unit. And we've, um, we've identified them how, where they're introduced, developed and mastered at different grade levels. Now, again, we've had over 15 people involved in this. We've had passionate conversations about where the I's and D's and go. We fully understand that depending on level of students, how many times you have music every week, this is going to be different for your school. We expect that. But we wanted to publish this completely transparently so you can see what we're working from. And this will be available. So when those lessons come out, if you say, well, I choose to start solfege patterns in first grade instead of kindergarten, that's totally fine. You can take this kindergarten lesson and use it in first grade, or you could take this second grade lesson and use it in first grade if you do minor pentatonic earlier. But we think it's really important that you see where these concepts are introduced in our flow. So you know the flow, you know that it's very thoughtfully aligned, but you could also use it as you need. So Christy and Shauna, I know you've been so instrumental in this. What do you want to share? What did I miss? Um, I don't think you missed too much. I, I think that like it's important to know it's all surrounded with like kind of six units or six different co main concepts. Um, and then we fit everything kind of into those from rhythm, um, beat duration, to meter, to um, pitch, melody, harmony is our, the third one. Then that moves to um, timbre, form, and then expressive elements, which is your dynamics, your tempo, your articulations. So we really tried to kind of consolidate to make it um, those big bucket concepts that we all cover throughout the year and make it in a form that it is easily customizable, that people could pull and utilize what they need, when they need it, and how they need it. But yet, there will be a structure of 30 lessons per grade level, five per concept um, unit. And so that gives you enough to cover really the full the full year with, you know, we add in here and there and we do have to, the principal says you gotta do this special thing or that special thing. And all of a sudden you're, you're at the end of the year. Um, so, the, and the lessons I just saw someone put in the chat, the, it is K through five, correct, John? We are K Correct. through five. It'll yes. be K through five, 30 lessons per grade, K through five, 180 lessons. And we are on track to deliver them this summer. We yep. already have 40 in the works. We're adding 20, 30 plus a week. We have, we have a huge team of writers. And the key to all of this is this alignment. We have spent months and months and months making sure we get this right. Because if we get this right, then these 180 lessons are sequential, both vertically for grade levels as well as horizontally. And so that was our goal, provide all the concepts aligned and give you 30 lessons per grade level. And you know exactly the sequence of these lessons in our minds so that you can use them in that way, but you can also mix and match and use different grade levels as you need. And you can mix and match concepts. 
totally up to you, right? We want to give you as many resources as possible and the ability to adapt them as needed. Um, Christy, I know you are, you've added so much um, help to this, this concept map as well. Well, I, I know that there's going to be more than they'll ever need in all of the lessons. There will be more than you'll ever be able to teach. But the beauty of it is that you can pull out of a lesson something that you like and you can mix it with a different lesson area you can you can just stir your little pot however you want to do it and th they're just that's the beauty of it just the way that this uh format works for eemc makes it so easy to you know mix and match and do what you need to do and i i'm a big proponent of have have more than i need because uh you just you know, you have more choices that way. So I do know that. And, you know, we did talk a lot about the songs and you were hearing Broadway and you were hearing musicals and you were hearing Disney, but uh, there are a lot of really great teaching songs that are in EEMC. And you're going to find great multicultural songs that all have those concepts in there that you can pull out. And they are being used within these lessons. They work independently but they're also going to be used in those lessons so that you can, you know, ingrain them in your kids. They need to know this music. So yeah, I'll, there'll I'm, be more than you'll ever need. I'll just tell you that. I'm glad and you also, said, go ahead. I was going to say, and also what's great is with us taking um, in the, the SEL within these lessons, it's going to help. What, how we're doing it is we're, we're ensuring that within each concept unit, within the five lessons, you're covering each of the five SEL, uh, Castle's SEL core competencies of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making, where there are songs and activities embedded that connect back to the concepts being taught. It's not like, oh, throw in this song that has, that, you know, talks about an emotion. No, these are authentic activities and songs that also reinforce the concepts being taught. So it's all being done in a holistic, authentic manner. Shauna, you know, like we we like really literally finished this thing. That was exactly what I was going to say. And you said it so much more eloquently. And I, that was one thing that we've had a lot of discussion on with our team is that, okay, we have lessons that teach concepts, right? We're going to teach strong and weak beat through a lesson. Now, what songs are best to cover that? And then how do we build in those SEL comments? How do we build in those uh, national core standards into that? And we've worked really hard. Like, I mean, every song has been gone through which ones and we're trying to pick the absolute best songs for the concepts and make it totally flexible. So let me show you uh, a sneak peek at what a new lesson is gonna look like. Currently, when you look at the lessons, just so everyone's tracking with language, when I say lesson step, our lessons are multiple steps, right? And each step could be a learning goal, it could introduce vocabulary, it could be activities, a connection, a self-check. So these are all steps and I'll just launch and show you the lesson format. I'm sure everyone's seen it, but just in case you'll have an introduction step and then you have an introduction song. So here's the song and then here's the teaching steps and the, the lesson steps right here for the teacher to go through. And so each of these steps provides, here's the learning goals, the graphics for the students, right? And you can open up and see the information for teachers to go through. So this is what I, I'm talking about when I refer to lesson steps. Now, I'll show you a sneak peek on this webinar only, uh, what a new lesson concept is going to be. Now, this is one of our live in action working Google Docs from a writer. We will be providing a one page overview, which is new, right? I know that's a big feature request. A lot of people say, can I just print like a one page overview to see what these are? So you can actually see um, your lesson overview with all the vocab introduced, the songs, the SEL competencies, the and the National Core Art Standards covered. All of these will be in there for you to see. Then each lesson step will be detailed out. You'll have an introduction activity or an introduction song. Every lesson will review learning goals that are aligned with that concept map. Every lesson will have an authentic connection step, right? So you will be connecting as part of NCAS, referencing the exact standard in the lesson. 
You will also have a vocabulary step. You'll be able to introduce what terms are used for the students, again, aligning to the musical concept maps that align to NCIS. Then you'll have the instruction steps where you'll go through covering all the concepts that the lessons are based on. You'll have activities to drive home those concepts. Again, all aligned to NCAS at every step that you need. And then every lesson will have an SEL activity that again, aligns to the songs, that aligns to the specific Castle competency in here and gives instructions for students to work on uh, SEL competencies. You will have a learning goal and an assessment step and then a closing activity. So I know I kind of went through this quickly, but I wanted to share that format because every new lesson will have those, those steps and consistently. So you'll know that every lesson will have SEL, every lesson will have NCIS, every lesson will have songs, all focused on musical concepts and you know exactly what to expect. We're also going to make all lessons searchable by NCIS, SEL and concept and grade level. So today I know that you're used to seeing the lessons all sort of sorted by, by grade level only. We are gonna make it so that you can search and sort lessons by grade level, by SEL competency, by NCAS, by musical concept, however you need it. So you can use the lessons one through 30 per grade level, but you can say, I'm looking to focus on self-awareness. Uh, in third grade. And, oh, I really want to cover this concept of meter. I really want to start talking about time signatures. You could find them all. So we're going to, we're building it all so it's perfectly aligned and it's going to be so awesome. I'm, I hate to say I'm just so excited, but I really am. We're all excited. And it's also important to know, and we're building the lessons to be about 30 minutes. I will say definitely no less, but I would say 30-ish. <laughs> Um, ish, 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 because 30 minutes goes so fast. But so just knowing that, that, that we, you know, we did a lot of discussion about what is the average and reasonable amount of time that people have with their kiddos. Yeah. And you say 30, 30 ish is a, a good point, right? Like I know we're, we always say 30 ish, but one thing we also is, is we have conversations about like, wow, there's like four or five songs that would really work. Our writing team, we've instructed, we, we've really um, empowered our writing team. Say, so if you have two or three ideas, we're okay with putting out options because in in EEMC, if you haven't seen it, lessons, you can, um, when you go into the steps of any particular lesson, you can disable steps as needed. And you can also drag and drop lesson steps around in different order. So knowing that's possible, you will also see lessons that might have a couple song options and might have two SEL activity options. And as a teacher, you can select which step you choose to use. You could select which song you choose to use. Again, we're doing our best to get the best and brightest minds together to build the best possible lesson format for you. But we also want you to rip it apart, do it in different orders, change it up however you need. And again, this is all going to be ready for September. Like, we can't say that enough because I know people yeah. are like, when, 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 you know, like for September, you'll be yeah. able to kick off the new year, August, whenever you start, kick it off and be off and running. And so, I mean, yeah, this is like literally, I'm like, there are 40, like, we, this is in progress, like ready to go. Like we have, we are rocking and rolling now. And I think the most important thing that we really took months and months to, to want to get right is the alignment. Right? If it's not aligned to the right musical concepts and, and the right skills and, and really include that SEL component, that was the key. And when, now we have our map, we have our alignment, we feel really good about where we are, and it's just, it's moving really fast. Um, gosh, anything else? I'm trying to think of any other sort of fun things we're going to see in the next couple of uh, months here, besides lessons, more, more digital books. Um, also, we love feedback and the, the chat and the, the comments have been going is so fantastic. As you can see, Stephanie and Laura are wonderfully receptive. I see them answering all of these questions. Info at eemusicclass.com. Email us, email us, email us. We will respond. We are here to talk to you. And if you haven't seen it yet, we're flexible. If you haven't realized all the things flexible, adaptable, flexible, adaptable, we're adaptable. 
If you want to talk to us about district implementation, if you want to do pilots, if you want professional development, the other thing we really want to do, and actually Christy and Shauna are available. I am, I am just offering your time right now, y'all. If your school district is adopting EMC and you want to schedule a professional development in the fall where you get one of our experts, especially Christy and Shauna to come, we, they, we will send them really virtually. We can come into your school district and we can do a planning session where we look at your district curriculum and we can go through and align the EMC lessons and content to your curriculum with your teachers. We would love to do that. We want to be partners in the education of your children, truly. And we'll definitely be having more of these webinars as this rolls out over the next few months going into September and into the fall for sure. So you guys can stay on top of like us trying to help you get ready and show you all these new features and as the lessons roll out and how you can search and the best ways to do it, best practices we've found um, or maybe you found and you can share with us. Um, but that will also definitely be happening. And I will say that I've been reading through the chat too. Honestly, the best ideas come from you all. So continue feeding that information out there because we know what we like, but there's a lot of other things that we haven't thought about. And your comments, and I see a lot of them coming through here, you know, are wonderful. So just keep spinning those wheels. We love it. John, someone just asked how they're definitely interested in maybe a PD for their school district. Who would they reach out to? Is that the info at EEMC? Info at eemusicclass.com. And Stephanie, you probably popped that in. Just said popped that email a few times. I know it's seen it. I've already done it. It's I, I, you know, side note, it's late. It's been a long day. I like end every day, like feeling hashtag blessed to work with like the most phenomenal people. Like I adore all of y'all so much. And just the, the team effort here, it, you can tell the energy, like we really love working on this and we really love thinking about what's best. Um, I wanted to address the Canada question. We're also looking internationally as well. And one of the things that we, you know, we know we're using the, the US National Core Arts Standard Alignment, but our concept map musical concepts are really universal, right? So like we've made this as flexible as possible so you can look at the musical concepts and align them to your curriculum, no matter where you are. We're really trying to make this as universal as possible. Um, any other final thoughts? I'll, I have one thing to close out with, but Christy, Sean, I'll open it up to you for final thoughts. Um, no, I, you know, it's always great to be here and it was great seeing all those ideas coming in. It's, you know, things we can't think of everything. So the more you guys send us, the better. We can't stress that enough. Um, and if you have questions, obviously email and we will definitely get back to you. And i um, so glad to be here tonight. Yeah. And I will just say, you know, I know maybe the rest of the world is spilling this too, but I think we're going to make it past all of this. And what a great way to start your next year with EEMC in your pocket and um, all these great songs that kids will finally be able to sing again. I don't know if we'll still be singing in masks, but I think we'll be able to get together. And I think that's the point. So EEMC is the way to go if you wanna have something that's gonna really fire up your kids. And thank you all for being here tonight. And I know that some of you are probably getting up your dinner times to do it, but we appreciate it. You know, it is perfect segue. One of the things I wanted to announce at this webinar that just went live today. So if you're watching it live, you're the first to hear this is that not only are we committed to EMC, but how Learn has a number of educational resources, essential elements interactive, no flight learn, sound check, a host of publications. I mean, so many things, but we want to prepare uh, us all, including as educators for a successful fall. We know it's been 16, 18 months at will, and we started in August of just disruption. And so how Leonard announced today that we are holding a back to school and I know it's another virtual thing. So I know no one needs another Zoom. The irony is not lost, but we are putting together what I promise you is the rock star uh, powerhouse team of people to do a two day 
online summit to prepare us all for going back into the fall. We have the leading experts on social emotional learning, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, special needs stu for sp uh, students with special needs. We have um, advocacy experts, all these big topics that are going to be really important on going back. We are preparing a phenomenal program, including some surprise guests and artists. And so we'd love you. It's totally free. Right? No virtual exhibit, just content for you. So please register at the link I just put in. It is looking forward to 2021 22 How Learners Virtual Education Summit, July 29th and 30th. Yes, it will be recorded if you can't make it live, but please register and share with everyone. Again, it is completely free, it is completely open to anyone. We just want to bring the entire education community together and really talk about how we can go back into that classroom and serve the needs of every one of those sweet special students. So we're so excited to announce this and we're so excited to announce the, the, the topics and presenters coming soon. So thank you all so much. Um, have a wonderful evening, everyone. If you watch the whole recording, thank you so much. Remember info at eemusicclass.com is your go-to and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for attending everybody.